Welcome to another edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. Marley and I are doing this one. This is a year-end wrap-up one. How's everybody doing out there? Oh, Marley. Hi. Hi. So this one is, uh, we're going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of go over how we all made out for Christmas as far as music stuff goes. And then we're going to talk about what I think, um, not that there's many contenders from my point of view, but uh, probably the best album to come out in 2018. And Marley's sweater there is a clue as to who we're talking about. It's probably no big surprise. So anyway, um, first thing I'm going to do is talk about an early Christmas present that I got, which was a nice surprise for my good buddy Matt, who's uh, been a co-host on the show many times. This one was actually, I, I, I understand, was a three-way combination uh, between Matt, Marley here, and uh, another good friend of the show, Bug Campbell, Andy Campbell. Uh, Andy found some gems for me at Value Village, and if anybody knows anything about me, can probably figure out Value Village. I bet it was eight tracks. It was eight tracks. So let's talk about that. That was an early uh, Christmas present that uh, Matt bestowed upon me. The big thing we'll talk about, which is very cool, and I've been playing it a lot, you've seen an example of me playing it, is uh, my very first foot pedal to go with my new Boss amp. This is a Boss Dual Foot Switch F56. Uh, allows. I haven't really gotten through all the ins and outs of it yet, but it's uh, very nifty to shift in between acoustic and electric sounds, or just two different, <clears throat> completely different guitar tones. Very easy to use, very easy to set up an online tutorial, and I was on my way with that. So that was very, very cool. Uh, to go with that, I got this set of Journey guitar picks. I hope these are official. Uh, these have various artwork on them. So you can see that's Infinity, Escape, Frontiers, um, I believe that's the uh, Revelation album, Departure, and I don't know if that's, it's probably the Greatest Hits or maybe Greatest Hits too, but uh, some cool guitar picks with some cool artwork on them, which is always welcome. And the Value Village stuff, what you've all been waiting for. Um, this is very cool, I mean, it's hard to find really good Rock 8 tracks out there in the wild without resorting to eBay and Discogs and uh, trading groups like that. So, uh, Andy found me some gems, working on my Queen collection. Now, this is one I actually had, Sheer Heart Attack. So, I've gifted this to Marley, but that's awesome. Uh, it's a nice Canadian edition, and uh, really did a good job on my Kiss collection. There's a, a Canadian Destroyer 8-track, which is in much better shape than the one I had. Uh, another Canadian edition, Rock and Roll Over. Now, the funny thing about this, somebody had written their name on it, and the name was Tim. It was not me because I would never ever write my name on inside of anything like that. And the coolest thing, I had a Live 2, I had Volume 1 of a Live 2 because in the States it was sold as two tapes. This is a, a Canadian edition of a Live 2 that combines everything onto one tape. So that was very exciting. So I was happy about that. That was very cool. So Christmas itself, um, Christmas came, we all did quite well. I think the first thing we should talk about, Jack, um, Jack's busy playing Fortnite, so he <laughs> he's not sitting in with us. But he did get some cool music stuff. We're gonna Marley's gonna talk about what he got. Okay, um, I guess I'll just go. I'm sorry, I should have this. Um, so first of all, I'm being a good sister, and I got him some CDs. So I got him uh, "Mesmerize" by System of a Down, um, Led Zeppelin. Two after I returned Led Zeppelin four because I didn't realize he already had it, uh, and then his favorite Foo Fighters album and also mine. Uh, there is nothing left to lose. Um, he also got Queen, the works. Let's look at this one here. This is a very very cool thing. Um, this was used and it's an old UK EMI version. Like this is this is an old CD, an original CD, so. That's a cool addition to the collection. Uh, you got Led Zeppelin 3. Yeah, those are the remastered. Those Led yeah. Zeppelin ones are remastered ones. Yeah. Metallica, Hardwired to Self Destruct. Yeah, he had that on vinyl, but he didn't actually have it on CD. Yeah. Uh, Aerosmith, Night in the Ruts. And Queen, A Night at the Opera. Okay, so this queen craze. yeah, so this yeah, a bit of a queen craze. Now, Night at the Opera was picked on purpose. I think this would be a good a time as any to talk about uh, one of the okay. other things. Something yes. that that uh, Marley and Jack got, Sarah and I got 
four of us are going, as well as Sarah's parents, another edition of Classic Albums Live is coming to the Fredericton Playhouse uh, April 4th. Go to theplayhouse.ca now and get your tickets because it's an awesome show. They're recreating Queen and Night at the Opera, which Matt and I actually saw back in 2007. It was the first Classic Albums Live show that I got to see, and it was incredible. So this time around, um, we're all going. The six of us going at least. I hope Matt and Allie are going too. I don't know yet. But um, in order to do that, I figured that it would be only fitting if, if uh, Jack got a Night at the Opera with the ticket. So, and then... What and else is there for Jack? Jack also got a picture disc of Gorilla's Humans album, which is very cool because it's got all the faces of the members on, and the other one's the, back there, and I'm not about to dig it the out. Picture discs are just generally cool overall. Mm -hmm. So that's um, that was Jack. How did you make out, Mark? Oh, I got some stuff. Um, so first I got Rush, Snakes and Arrows. Metallica Ride the Lightning, which completes my Metallica 80s CD collection, as far as studio releases goes. Red Hot Chili Peppers Stadium Arcadium. That was a lie, I don't have Kill Em All. Didn't you get Kill Em All for your birthday? I did. Um, Queen 2. That was how she got her um, classic albums live ticket, because she's had... Night at the Opera for quite a long time. Yep. On vinyl and CD. Yeah. David Bowie, Heroes, which, fun fact, the title track is one of my favorite songs ever. Uh, Rush, Hold Your Fire. She just kind of looks like a red blob, but that's okay. Queen, Sheer Heart Attack, which I now also have on 8-track. Also available on 8-track. Yeah. And... This is cool. Vinyl of Garage Days... Re revisited. Yeah, that's the new Black and Recordings yes. version of it. Still not very produced. Speaking of, still better bass, anyway. Um, <laughs> um, another thing that Marley got, speaking of Metallica, is she completed her Metallica pop figurine collection <laughs> and then some because you got James Hatfield, yes. which gave you the four current members. Yeah. But what else did you get? Lady Justice, which and was a special release with the uh, 30th anniversary of Injustice for All. So that leaves me uh, with stuff that I actually did get at Christmas. The kids got me a $50 Sunrise gift card, which is always welcome. And Sarah and I are going to be seeing and get ready for an upcoming episode. Uh, we're in less than a month now. We're going to be seeing Brian Adams in Moncton. I've seen Brian Adams in concert before, and she has not. So we're looking forward to that show. So that was Christmas. Hope you guys had, uh, had a good Christmas. Show us what you got. Uh, tell us about it. I know that Will, another co-host in the show, did very, very well this year. Got a bunch of CDs. He got some of my hand-me-down Kiss 8 tracks and concert tickets. He got concert tickets to no end. Yeah. So there were I'm, there will no doubt be some upcoming uh, concert reviews of those. One in particular is going to be a very, very special thing. So that brings us to, uh, the as the 2018 comes to a close, we're going to talk about a great album that came out this year. It was much anticipated. Uh, by our little group here, and I know a lot of other people, uh, I think it debuted at number three in the Billboard chart, which is awesome for a modern rock album. And it's the new one from Greta Van Fleet, Anthem of the Peaceful Army. The first thing I'm going to do is show you the vinyl I got here. Got this from uh, Brad at Casadilla Records, uh, it's, uh, shop local folks. This is the vinyl version. Um, very cool, very 70s looking, very 70s sounding. And um, on Lava Republic Records, there's the back cover. What is it that was... Where's the misprint on this? Right one? there. Okay. Yeah, there is a misprint on this version. This is Greta Van Fleet presents Anthem of the Peaceful Army. You see there it's missing the second E in Peaceful. So if you've got a hold of this copy, chances are they'll be reprinting it proper spelling, which will make this one a sort of a modern collectible. So Marley, you've got it. We both got it. And yeah. Jack all have it on CD. Marley, what is your opinion of this album? Well, Dad, as you all know, I went to see them live in concert, and I got to hear a few of the songs live, and I just, it's very good. It's a very strong album to me, no matter what certain uh, media outlets say. Haters gonna hate. Critics gonna criticize. It's Greta Van Fleet. I mean, if you didn't like them before, I don't think this album's gonna change your mind, although... 
you know, the Led Zeppelin comparisons, yeah, they're there, uh, but what band, what rock band, heavy rock band wasn't influenced by Led Zeppelin, even if the band themselves say, well, I didn't like Led Zeppelin, but chances are somebody they do like was influenced by them, so inadvertently it's there. But I don't think they're quite as pronounced on this album as no. they were in the past. Uh, and I've heard other people say this, so when I, when I first heard it, I was like, okay, so it's not just me. Um, Josh, what's his last name? I can never say it right. Kiska. Um, his vocals on this album, yeah, okay, they're still leaning um, quite a bit towards early Robert Plant, but I actually think I hear a little bit of early Getty Lee in, in the vocals. So, which makes sense because when Rush first came out on their first album, they were very Zeppelin sounding, and obviously Robert Plant was somebody that uh, Getty uh, was attempting to emulate in the early days. So that kind of makes sense. So yeah, uh, Lover, Lever, Taker, Believer, that was a song that they did in concert when you saw them, right? Yes, I do believe so. Was there another one? Uh, they did... They do When the Curtain Falls? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was it. That, that had just, it. just come out? No, that had actually come out like a week or so after we got back. Okay. Um, they might have done Brave New World. I don't know. I don't remember a lot of the concert, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> um... So there's been two singles released so far, When the Curtain Falls and also You're the One. Great tunes. Um, this is a band to watch. I hope that they are able to sustain and, uh, you know, keep putting out music. There are still, I think, a few other stray songs that they haven't actually put on an album. Oh, yeah. They've just, got a bunch. It just occurred to me now, too, that another Rush comparison might be an easy one. There is actually a song on this album called Anthem. Um, nothing at all to do with the Rush song. but um, So, yeah. I think Album of the Year, Greta Van Fleet, Anthem of the Peaceful Army. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah. It's worth noting that they're nominated for not one, not two, but four Grammys. Yeah, for what it's worth. But hey, you know, Grammy on the shelf is a Grammy on the shelf. So, so that was our uh, year-end wrap-up episode. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. We've got some episodes planned for you in the new year. There will be some concert reviews. There will be some uh, road trips be some album reviews and the, just ones that have uh, just going through my cassette collection. Also, um, I'm not 100% sure. I'm just kind of mulling it over in my head. I'm adding on my, believe it or not, 200th episode. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to do something special for that. I'm, I'm thinking about it. So, so stay tuned. And as always, thank you for watching Tim's Final Confessions.